Well, good morning. As new launches go, we had a few technical difficulties, but I think we're here with you now. And I hope we're not sideways or upside down, but whatever you have to do to adjust your phone or your iPad, come on and join us, Joan. Close hand sanitizer. All right, everybody remember to sanitize. It's good to be with you. Cup of coffee. Joan has her tea. We're just saying good morning, Zion Fellowship, and anyone else who's joining us here this morning. We're so glad that you're able to be with us, to join us, but we're really missing seeing you face to face. That day is going to come, but in the meantime, we're going to adapt and do whatever we need to do to continue to gather together as the body of Christ. I'm going to open with a word of prayer, and then Joan's going to take us right into worship. And so, Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would just come into this space, into this room with your presence and your power, that you would cause our hearts to be at peace. I'm asking God that as this video stream goes into uh, living rooms and dens right now, that your presence, your peace would just come into our homes, that our homes would be a place of your presence. As worship begins to fill it, oh God, let our hearts be stirred, let our hearts be taken up with the glorious revelation of who you are. And so Lord, we ask your presence to guide us and to lead us here this morning, in Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Let's worship the Lord together.
encourage you to grab your Bibles, find the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter. I want to spend some time just in the Word of God with you this morning, very briefly, but I just want to encourage you that in this time where we seem to have more time, more time at home, more time doing different things, let's use our time wisely. Some of the way that we use our time wisely is by being in the Word of God. If your heart's troubled, if things are just being stirred up on the inside of you and you're wondering what's next or what's the next thing we're going to hear, the only remedy for a troubled heart is the Word of God. And that's where I want to take you today. In John's Gospel, the 14th chapter, Jesus is speaking to His disciples. I want to read the first six verses, but then we're going to zero in on verse 1. He says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and, and the way, you know. And, and then Thomas interjects and he says, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can, we, how can we know the way? And listen to this. Verse 6, Jesus says to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, the disciples at this time, they, they are troubled at what's happening around them. Jesus has told them that one of them is going to betray him and and that he's not going to be with them much longer. And, and he has said some very profound things to them. And their hearts are troubled. And I think as we begin to look at this text, we see immediately Jesus responding to their fears. And he shows them that he deeply cares about how they feel and what they're going through. And, and you know, in a time like we're going through, it's unprecedented. I've never experienced this in my life, what we're going through right now. And I think it's important for you to understand that Jesus cares about you deeply as well. You know, Martin Luther called this particular passage that I've cited the best and the most comforting sermon that Jesus delivered on the earth. So get the picture. Jesus is looking at his disciples, these guys that have been hanging out with him now for a number of years, and he knows what's going on in their minds and in their hearts. He knows that they're disturbed and they're upset and they're disappointed. He knows that. And he, and he knows for you and for me the, the places where we're agitated and where we're upset and where we're disappointed. You see, he knows what's causing all of that in your heart. But he also knows what the remedy is. So perhaps you're feeling just like these disciples today. Maybe your heart's troubled. Maybe, maybe you have a fearful heart. Maybe you're upset over all of the inconveniences that you're having to put up with. Maybe you're disturbed uh, when you consider how things are being handled. Your heart is just agitated because of what's going on. The picture of a troubled heart is when water gets all stirred up and all turned around. That's the picture, the word. It means to, to be disturbed. It means to lose your mental calm and, and, and contentment. It means to be overcome with worry and distress and, and to be agitated, especially because you've been put to some kind of an inconvenience. But what impressed me, and this is where I want us to zero in, is on verse 1. There are two simple words 
that Jesus says to his disciples. He says, let not. That means that, that these disciples could do something about their problem. They held in their own hands, if it were, the key to release themselves from their heart trouble. It was possible for them to either let it happen or not let it happen at all. And Jesus is saying this to all of us today, in our day, in our trouble. There's a way out of a troubled heart. And Jesus goes on to give the answer to them. How do you overcome a troubled heart? Listen to the simplicity of this answer. Let not your hearts be troubled. What? Come on, Jesus. After all that you just said, after all that we're going through, after my world is being turned upside down, what are you talking about? How can I not have a troubled heart? Listen to what Jesus says. He says, believe in God. The one who is still in control. The one who knows what he's doing. The one who is capable of exercising infinite wisdom, infinite power, and infinite love. And believe also in me. Believe in the one who is the means by which all wisdom and all resource and the power of God is made available to you. He says that's the secret. See, the basic fear was that he was going to be leaving them and, and they would have to face all of these issues on their own. They would have to face life and, and death and the complexities of life and all the change. They were going to have to do it all alone. And into that fear and that turmoil and that agitation... Jesus says words like this, I'm not going to leave you, but I'm coming again. And this is developed throughout the rest of the chapter. See, now, you'll understand chapter 14 much better if you realize two things. First, that the Lord promises that he's coming again, and he's coming again in person. This assurance ought to give us rest in the midst of the complexities of life, but second, and a little later on in the chapter, he says, I'm going to be coming to you by the Spirit to end all of your fears in the life in which you now live. He promises to be with them. And verse 18 says, I will not leave you desolate. I will not leave you as an orphan. I'll come to you. Believe in God. Believe also in me. See, the answer to your fear, the answer to our uncertainty, the answer to all of our disappointment is simple. It's faith. Put your hope in God. Put your trust in God. The next time you're afraid, reach out. Grab a hold of one of God's promises. Lay hold of it by the power of Jesus, and your fear will vanish. There's no other answer for fear but that. Anything else will permit the fear to come back again and again. But the promises of God, they remain steady. They remain sure. And the availability of the resources of Jesus to lay hold of it is the way to our deliverance. I love the way Peter says it. He says, His divine power has given you everything you need for life and godliness through His great and very precious promises. So the moment you believe in Jesus Christ, He who is the Prince of Peace, when the Prince of Peace comes, the moment you believe in Him, He comes and He lives inside you through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that Prince of Peace residing within you will release blessing that you will, you will need pertaining to all of life. Mm -hmm. You say, Chris, if, if that's really true, if that's really true, then, then why do I get so unsettled in times like this? Why does my heart get so out of sorts when things change? And the answer is this, it's a troubled heart. A trouble and a, and a fearful heart, it works like fingers around a hose. You know, if you've got a water hose and, and you squeeze it, the supply of water is flowing from the tap, but nothing is actually coming forth because the hose has been restricted. That's what a troubled heart will do to you. God's ever-present supply of blessing towards you is like the water flowing freely from the tap. But you don't see the blessing. When you allow your heart to be gripped by worry and fear. So, listen to me. When fear, anxious thoughts come, remind yourself of these words of Jesus. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Even when things get their worst, the Lord says, refuse to worry about it. 
in the midst of all this, trust in the finished work of the cross. Trust in the finished work of Calvary. Jesus was the one who said it's finished. So you have to say to yourself, I will not let my heart be troubled by these things. So don't lose your love. What an opportunity we have right now to love one another and care for one another and reach out to one another, especially within our homes. If we can't go outside of our homes or if we're restricted, let's reinforce the fact that we love one another within our homes. Don't lose your joy. Hey, have some fun. Don't sit around gloomy and glum because certain things are not available to you. Enjoy life because you have the one, Jesus Christ, being the life giver. And don't lose your peace. If you have to turn off the news feed every once in a while, turn it off. Be informed. Know what's going on. But if you digest too much of what's flowing out on the news, you're going to lose your peace. Instead of spending a lot of time watching the TV and news feeds, why don't you spend more time in the Word of God? just meditating upon his goodness and his kindness. Folks, listen to me. I cannot let not for you. Your family and your friends cannot let not for you. Only you can let not your heart be troubled. So guard your heart from being troubled. When you guard your heart, God will guard everything else for you. Now let me say this as I close. If you've never asked Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, If you've never asked him to come and to save you from your sin and your fears and your anxieties, you can simply ask him to do that today. You can receive the fullness of his forgiveness and you can allow him to usher in his peace in the place of your unrest. You know, Proverbs chapter 3 says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all of your ways and he shall direct your paths. I'd like to pray with you today if you'd like to ask Jesus Christ into your heart. And it's a simple prayer. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I just acknowledge that I need you. I need you in this time of unsettledness. I need you in this time of unrest. Lord, my heart gets troubled so easily. But I can overcome that troubled heart by putting my trust and my faith and my hope in you. Lord, I ask you to come and forgive me of all of my sin and relieve me of all of my fears. Lord, I ask you to come and be the Lord and Savior of my life and to reign supreme in my heart. Jesus, I ask you to be glorified in my life. Amen. Now, we're going to go a little old school on you as we wrap up here today. It's a song that we used to sing I think a long time ago, I'm thinking maybe the 70s or 80s, be magnified. I don't know when this song was written, but the words in this song are so powerful. And so we're going to sing it. If you know it, join with us. I have made you too small in my heart.
wisdom of men. I have leaned on the wisdom of men. Oh Lord, forgive me, and I have responded to them instead. like to know more about Jesus, you can message us right here, Zion Fellowship Facebook page. There's a message button that you can hit and you can let us know and give us a way that we can contact with you, be in contact with you. Or you can just call us at the church at 585-394-7450. We'd love to hear from you. There's a couple of housekeeping things that I want to do for us as we just close out this session. The first one is this, just for all of you that are part of Zion Fellowship, is to realize that the staff will be working all week, but we'll be working uh, from remote locations, which is our homes, okay? Uh, there'll be a few exceptions uh, with that. Uh, Pastor Jeff is keeping the storehouse open, and, and there'll be people in the building from time to time, but uh, pretty much we're all going to be working from home. And uh, Shannon will be checking the phone daily to see if there's calls that have come in. We'll be responding to our emails and Facebook pages and, and messages and all of that. Also, realize that, that the leadership, the elders, the deacons, the pastors, the small group leaders, ministry directors, they've all mobilized during this time. And, and so you're going to be getting check-in phone calls from them. They're going to be checking up on you and, and uh, finding out how you're doing. So don't be surprised if all of a sudden you start getting bombarding with calls. We really miss you. We really love you. We're really concerned for you and we want to stay in touch. Listen, don't allow yourself in a time like this to be isolated from others. Even with all of the restrictions that are put in place, we can still connect. We can connect over FaceTime. We can connect by phone. Uh, we can connect uh, in a number of different ways. Please stay connected. Don't allow yourself to be isolated and put on some kind of an island. There's no need for us to do that. We can't meet face to face. We've got to keep safe distances. We're going to do all of that because we want to see this COVID-19 thing done with once and for all. And so we're going to do what we need to do physically. We're going to do what we need to do spiritually. We're going to need do what we need to do emotionally. So we encourage you to do this. In the, in the present situation that many of you are facing, the biggest message that the leadership of Zion Fellowship wants to pass on to you is this. We are here for you. 
You know, if, if, if your employment has been affected by everything that's going on and needs arise within your home, please don't hesitate to let us know how we can help you. We have adapted. We continue to do things in an, in an adaptive mode. We want to be able to um, uh, respond to any needs that might arise. Also, listen, we're going to be checking up on you, but why don't you check up on one another? Why don't you call a friend, people in your small group? Let's just start connecting one uh, with another and just let's be resilient let's be resourceful as we go forth we're going to continue to work on better ways to get connected with you as you can tell we're still on a learning curve here just by the way we launched this thing but God is in control and uh, so be praying at home be reading the word of God at home uh, we're going to be putting together some pre-recorded teachings so that you can go uh, to our Facebook page and, and download them and listen to them. Uh, we're continuing as long as we can to encourage you to prayer walk, to get out into your communities, get out. It's a beautiful day outside. Get some fresh air. Walk your communities. Pray for your communities. Prayer is going to turn this thing. Prayer is going to turn this thing. I firmly, firmly believe it. And so we encourage you to do this. And look for ways to help others. Check on your neighbors. Check on the elderly in your community and find out ways that we can be a resource and a help. Now, for those of you who want to continue to give to the ministry here at Zion Fellowship, if you're a member here and you're wondering, well, how, what do I do with my tithe? What do I do with my offering? Well, you can visit our website and uh, you hit the Give tab and uh, you can give by card, you can give uh, via the bank, you can go PayPal if you're set up for that, or you can use the Cash App. It's all there. All you got to do is hit the Give tab button. Or if you're old school and you want to put your tithe in an envelope and mail it into the church, just mail it in to our regular address, 5188 Bristol Road, Canandaigua, New York, 14424. Because needs are still coming in, and we want to be able to respond to those needs. Our operating, operating expenses still exist. We've not closed down the church. We've only shut down the building. The church is still alive. It's active. It's moving. So, Joan, did I forget anything? I think you're good. Okay, folks. God bless you guys. We Amen. love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. We do. And this virus is going to be defeated both spiritually and medically. God bless you. Amen.